Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello Lana, my name is Mugalo and uh, I want to welcome you to today's lesson. Our topic for discussion being isomerism in alkynes. We have already seen from the earlier lessons that uh, isomerism refers to the existence of a compound in the same molecular formula but different structure formula. Just like uh, alkenes, alkynes show two types of isomerism. We have branching isomerism and positional isomerism. So branching isomerism, like we said in the previous lesson, it occurs when a substituent group is attached to any middle carbon atom. And remember, the longest chain must contain the triple bond. So as far as positional isomerism is concerned, just like alkenes, it refers to uh, isomers formed when the location of the triple bond is uh, changed. So whatever we learned under alkenes is the same as alkynes. The only difference is the fact that alkynes have a triple bond, but alkenes have a, a double uh, bond. So we start by reminding ourselves isomerism. We have we said that isomerism, isomerism uh, refers to the uh, existence, existence of a compound, existence of a compound in the same, in the same molecular formula, in the same molecular formula, but different, different structural uh, formula. So the definition is the same, just like the one for alkenes and alkenes. From the word isomerism, we get the word isomers. So isomers, once again, are compounds uh, that have the same compound that have the same molecular, uh, the same molecular formula, but different, different structural, different structural uh, formula. So you should be able to define uh, those two words, isomerism, as well as uh, isomers. So uh, types of isomerism in alkenes, uh, in alkenes, we have already, in alkynes, we have already seen, we have two, we have uh, branching isomerism, and we have said branching isomerism occurs when a substituent group is attached to any middle, a carbon atom. So occurs when a substituent substituent group substituent group is attached uh, is attached to any middle uh, carbon atom any middle carbon atom in the longest, in the longest carbon chain. And remember the longest carbon chain must contain the carbon-carbon triple bond. Uh, the second uh, type of isomerism, we call it positional. Positional isomerism. From the word position, we can be able to say that position isomerism refers to type of isomerism where the position of the carbon-carbon triple bond is changed. So occurs, occurs when uh, it occurs, uh, this one occurs uh, when the position of the uh, carbon carbon uh, triple bond uh, changes. So you can move the triple bond 
from carbon 1 to carbon 2 from carbon 2 to carbon 3 uh, onwards like that so these are the two types of isomerism that exists uh, as far as alkynes are are concerned so after saying that i want us to now consider uh, some examples here i want us to consider the following examples so we are going to combine the two both branching and positional uh, but our first question i want us to uh, look at uh, branching isomerism so our question is draw and name the possible uh, possible uh, branching isomers of possible branching isomers of pentyne draw a name the possible branching isomers of pentyne now after drawing you should be able to give the name and when giving the name of branching isomers the rules that we learned under alkenes will apply here the only difference is the fact that alkenes have a double bond but alkynes have a single bond so just remind you rule number one is that you should identify the longest carbon chain and the longest carbon chain must contain the carbon carbon triple bond then rule number two you should number the carbon atoms from the end that is near the uh, double bond so the end can be either the right or the left so if the carbon is near the carbon carbon double bond, triple bond is near the right hand side you should begin numbering from the right going towards the left if the carbon carbon triple bond is near the left you start numbering from the left going towards the right then the last rule is you identify the position of any substituent group so the rules we learned under alkenes are the same as the rules we are learning under alkynes the only difference is that we are introducing a carbon carbon triple bond so but the rules are just uh, the same so having said that i want us to now consider uh, this compound called pentyne it is good before you draw you should know the molecular formula so the molecular formula molecular formula uh, is uh, c5 h from the general formula of alkynes which is cnh2 n minus 2 uh, that will be 10 minus 2 and that will be uh, h we have already seen that from the uh, general formula so the first thing you do learner is you draw the structure of that compound with five carbon atoms so this will be the five carbon atoms and then you show a triple bond between any two carbon atoms then the rest will be hydrogen putting in mind that each carbon must have a total of four covalent bonds at the end of the day so already this one has four the second carbon has four you can see this one has two so we are adding one up another one below then you put hydrogen this one has two we are adding one up another one below then you put hydrogen the last one has one so we are adding three more one on the right one up then another one below so that is the first structure that we come up with the name you number those carbon atoms from the end that is near the carbon carbon triple bond so if you look at this structure keenly lana you'll realize that the carbon carbon triple bond is near our left hand side so we shall number from the left going towards the right so this will be carbon one carbon two carbon three carbon four and carbon five so we have numbered and that will tell you the parent will have five carbon atoms so when giving the correct name it is good to indicate the position of the triple bond and the triple bond is between carbon one and carbon two just like we learned under alkenes the triple bond should be given the lowest number possible so between one and two the lowest number is one 
So therefore, the correct name for this compound will be pent one ion. So that's the correct name. So this will be pent one ion. So this one means that the that triple bond is between carbon one and carbon two. So that is that. Now, from this pent one ion, we can get other isomers. And the isomers are obtained by simply creating uh, methyl, methyl groups. We saw that from the earlier lessons. This will give you a methyl group. And this methyl group, you attach it to any middle carbon atoms in the remaining carbon atoms. So the remaining carbon atoms will be four. So the middle carbon atoms are the carbon atoms labeled two and three. So you replace any hydrogen with this methyl, you'll get an you'll get a branched isomer. So the new isomer will be as follows. I'll draw this carbon atoms the four to form the new parent chain. So this will be one, two, three, and four. Then I put the triple bond between the first two. Then I put this hydrogen on the left, the first one. The second carbon has no hydrogen. The third carbon has two hydrogens. And remember, in the second carbon, we cannot add any more bond because already this carbon has four bonds. This is one, two, three, four. We cannot add another one. That means we cannot attach a branch on carbon number two. So the only possible destination is we put the branch on carbon number three because this one still has room for uh, more. Uh, uh, it has room for replacement of the hydrogen. So this hydrogen will be replaced by a methyl. You can choose this one or this one either way. So let's replace this hydrogen with this methyl. So here I will put a methyl. Then I'll remain with this hydrogen here, this one. Then here, this hydrogen. Then we have this hydrogen here. And then the one that has come here will be put here, like that. So that is an isomer. Giving the name, the rules are simple. Number from the end that is near the triple bond. Remember, if it is alkenes, then we said numbering should be from the end that is near the branch. So the branch is methyl. So if this was an alkene, we could have begun numbering from the right going towards the left. But now that is an alkyne, what we consider is the triple bond first. So the triple bond is near the left hand side. So numbering will be from the left going towards the right. So we should be careful with that rule. So we shall number from this side. Those things will be labeled as carbon one, then carbon two, carbon three, and carbon four like that. After which you should be able to tell the new parent name has four carbon atoms. So that alkene with four carbon atoms is called butane. But now that you are talking about alkynes, you should replace A-N-E with Y-N-E. Putting in mind, we have a triple bond between carbon one and carbon two. So the name will be, the correct name will be but, pick the lowest number between one and two is one. So the correct name of the parent will be but one ion. If you look at the structure, we have a branch or a substituent group occurring on the third carbon atom. So therefore, the complete name will be three dash then methyl. The methyl is attached to carbon three, then but one ion. We have already seen why it is one and not two. So these two structures that we have drawn here, Lana, we call them branching isomers because we have a substituent group. These two compounds will have the same molecular formula. Total carbon atoms are five. Total hydrogen atoms are eight in the first one. Total carbon atoms are five. Total hydrogen atoms are eight. So the two have the same molecular formula but different structures. Therefore, we refer to them 
as being what? Isomers. So those are the isomers of that particular uh, compound. Let's also look at another uh, question. So draw and name the possible uh, possible branching isomers of hexane. Draw and name the possible branching isomers of hexane. Remember the molecular formula of hexane is C six H ten. That ten is obtained by taking two n minus two, which is twelve. Twelve minus two will give you ten. So let us try and draw the possible isomers. So the first thing you do, Lana, you draw the uh, heptine itself. So this will be six carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then you show the location of the triple bond between any two carbon atoms. And then you fix hydrogen atoms, putting in mind the fact that each carbon atom we must have a total of four covalent bonds. So the first one we add one hydrogen atom. The second one will have no hydrogen atom. The third one will have two hydrogen atoms, as well as the fourth one, as well as the fifth one. But the sixth one will have three hydrogen atoms. So that structure we have drawn there, it is good we give the name. The rules are the same. The end that is near the triple bond is the left. So numbering will be from the left going towards the right. So carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, carbon five, and carbon six. So the six tells you the parent will be hex. And then you put the location of the triple bond in between carbon one and carbon two, pick the lowest number, which is one. So the correct name is hex one iron. So the name hex one I like that, X1 I. That is the first isomer. The next isomer is obtained by forming uh, methyl groups and attaching the methyl groups to any middle carbon atoms in the remaining part of the chain. So let us see how do we do that. So we can form a methyl group by picking the last carbon with the three hydrogen atoms. So the remaining will be from carbon 1 to carbon 5. So you pick any middle carbon atom and attach this methyl group. So we can attach that carbon atom, uh, that methyl to carbon atom 3 or carbon atom 4. So let us try the first one. We attach to carbon atom 3. Then the next one you attach to carbon atom 4. So this will be as follows. So this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The new one will have 5 carbon atoms. Then the triple bond between the first two. Then you have this hydrogen. Then you have that carbon. Then this uh, third uh, carbon, we attach this methyl group here on carbon label three. So we have a methyl. Then the rest remains uh, intact. Remember, this carbon, this hydrogen will be moved here. So it's just the hydrogen there. So that is the first isomer that will be formed from this one. So the name, the rules will be applied as usual. Numbering will be from the end that is near the triple bond. So near the triple bond is from the right, from the left, I mean. So this will be one, two, three, four, and five. So the new parent chain has five carbon atoms, hence the name pent. And the triple bond is between carbon 1 and carbon 2. So the correct name will be pent 1 ion. But remember, we have a branch or a substituent group on carbon number 3. Therefore, the correct name of this branched alkyne will be 3-methyl. Uh, 3-methyl because the branch is on carbon number 3. So it is 3-methyl, and then pent from the parent, uh, and then 
one and then I. So that is the correct name of that branch alkyl. Once again, we can still move this methyl group on carbon labeled four. So let us see what will be the new structure. So the rest remain as five. Then we have a triple bond. We have this hydrogen. Uh, then we have this and that. But carbon labeled four, we introduce a methyl group. Then this, this one remains, this hydrogen remains, this hydrogen remains, then this hydrogen also remains. But the hydrogen that was here has swapped positions with the methyl. So the methyl comes here, the hydrogen comes here. So we have that. That is the new structure. The naming, numbering will be from the left going towards the right. So this is carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, carbon 5, like that. After which you give the name. So the name will be uh, for methyl uh, paint one nine. So those are the possible isomers of this alkyl with a molecular formula of C6H10. You can see they have the same molecular formula but different structures. Therefore, those are called uh, branching isomers. In our next example, I want us to look at uh, positional uh, isomers. So uh, our third question for our revision is draw and name positional isomers positional isomers of pentine. Pentine has a molecular formula of C5H8. So positional isomers, we have seen from the definition, we only change the position of the carbon-carbon triple bond. So let's start by drawing uh, that positional isomers where, positional isomer where the triple bond is between carbon one and carbon two. So this will be as follows. And remember the parent will have five carbon atoms. So we shall draw the five carbon atoms, four, five. Then you put a triple bond between the first two. And then you put hydrogen on the first one. The next one will have no hydrogen. The third one will have two hydrogen atoms. The fourth will have two hydrogen atoms. The last will have three hydrogen atoms. So this is the first one. So naming will be from the end that is near the triple bond, which is the left hand side. And you can see from this structure, the triple bond is between carbon one and carbon two. Therefore, the correct name will be pent one ion, meaning the triple bond is between carbon one and carbon two. So their name will be paint one I. Uh, we can still move this triple bond between carbon two and carbon three. So this will be the new structure. Uh, you draw the five carbon atoms, and then you put the triple bond between carbon two and carbon three like that. And then you fix the hydrogen atoms, putting in mind the fact that each hydrogen, each carbon should have a total of four covalent bonds. So this is hydrogen. Hydrogen, hydrogen. So this will have four hydrogens. The next already has four bonds, therefore it will have no hydrogen. The third one has four bonds, so it will have no hydrogen. But the fourth one will have two hydrogen atoms. The fifth one will have three hydrogen atoms. The name numbering will be from the end that is near the triple bond. So Lana, if you look at it keenly, uh, the end that is near the triple bond is the left hand side. So we shall begin numbering from the left going towards the right hand side. So uh, you'll realize the triple bond is between carbon 2 and carbon 3. Therefore, we pick the lowest number. The lowest number between 2 and 3 is 2. So the correct name for this isomer will be P2. 
pent to ein. So the name will be pent to uh, ein. So you can see this structure and these structures are different, but they have the same molecular formula of C5H8. Same molecular formula, but different structures. Now, you realize if you move this triple bond here, it will have no effect on the name because you will begin numbering from the right going towards the left. So you will still get pent 2 ion. Therefore, these are the only isomers of, uh, the only positional isomers of pent, uh, pent 2 ion. Now, the next question I want you to uh, see. Suppose you are giving the name. How do you draw the structure? So, fourth question is as follows. So, the question is, uh, draw the structure of the following uh, compound. Draw the structure of the following compound. So, here, you, you have been given the name and then you are told to draw the, uh, the structure. So how do you draw the, the structure? So uh, the name is 3-bromo, 3-bromo, paint 1-i, 3-bromo, paint 1-i. Uh, so when you are drawing the structure, you consider first of all the parent, and the parent is having five because of the word paint. So we shall start by drawing the five carbon atoms and then you show the location of the triple bond and the triple bond is between carbon one and carbon two. And remember, we have always been told to give it the lowest number possible. So, uh, and the lowest number is one. So the structure will be as follows. You draw, uh, the five carbon atoms, one, two, three, four, five. Then the triple bond is between carbon one and carbon two because of that. And then the bromine is attached to carbon number three. So this is carbon one, carbon two, carbon three. So we put here the bromine like that. And then you give the rest as hydrogen atoms. So this is hydrogen, 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 and hydrogen, like that. So that is the structure of 4 bromo pent one ion. So let's look at one more. Uh, we are given the name. Uh, we have 4 chloro pent 2 ion. So we have a chlorine attached to carbon number four and the parent is pentyne. So, and the triple bond is between carbon two and carbon three because of that. So we draw the five carbon atoms and then put the triple bond between carbon two and carbon three, this one, and then the rest you fix with the hydrogen. Putting in mind, we have a chlorine on carbon number four. So this is carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four. So you have a chlorine here like that. Then the rest will be will be hydrogen, 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 like that. So that is the structure uh, of uh, four chloro paint to ion. So Lana, we have learned in today's lesson that alkynes exhibit two types of isomerism just like alkenes we have branching isomerism which occurs when there is uh, the presence of a substituent group and then we have positional which occurs when we have changed the position of the triple bond so uh, having said that uh, we have come to the end of our lesson i want you to try uh, and answer the following uh, questions that will help you uh, to understand uh, isomerism 
in archives. So the questions. So the first question is draw and name the possible branching isomers of alkyne with the formula C uh, seven H twelve C seven H twelve. So you try that one, the possible branching isomers. Then the second question is give the name of the following isomer. Uh, give the name of the following. Uh, branched, uh, branched alkyne. So here you have been given the structure. You try and give the name. We have the structure, so you try and get the name. So we have this. Remember, each carbon must have a total of four covalent for covalent bonds. So we can have a methyl attached and a chlorine attached. So you try and give the name of that uh, branched alkyne. And lastly, draw the positional isomers of hexane. Draw the positional isomers of hexane and don't forget to name them. Uh, so, Lana, that is the end of our lesson for today and I will see you in our next lesson. So, thank you so much.